Vi som samme gælder alle dag dem dag til alderen. Peter samme language revival in the digital era. Buddhist sport dem. Welcome. The traditional Peter Sami area is situated between the towns of Mu Irana and Buda and Fauska in Norway and in the central and northern parts of Adiaplug in Sweden. Peter Sami is a Uralic language in the Sami uh, branch and it is a Western Sami language. It's traditionally regarded to be the southernmost uh, language of the northwestern Sami languages. Um, in real life, there are signs that pointed both towards Lule Sami and towards Ume Sami uh, being a closer relative, and in many ways it behaves more like Ume Sami. The Peter Sami alphabet is uh, the Roman one. There's uh, some use of digraphs and even trigraphs. And there's diacritics in, um, on some letters in the official orthography. Uh, these include the long A, the E, the O and O, which are both represented with the A with ring, the Z, uh, which is pronounced either like the or d or r, and the th, which also has multiple pronunciation. In historical sources and current recordings, we also see the presence of ö and u. And special letters include the letter eng, and some letters are used only in non-integrated loan words. These letters are C, Q, W, X, and Z. There's nine regular grammatical cases, three numbers of pronouns and verbs. Nouns have only two numbers. And Peter Zami has copular verbs, like Mondiv Studenta, for instance, where that corresponds to I am student, uh, as opposed to, for instance, satsami, where the copula or the am verb is not present. There's a tendency towards uh, subject object verb, as in Biena Biergo Bodra, a dog the meat eats. So the dog eats the meat with the verb coming last. There's a relatively rich vowel harmony system, like in Umen Sasami, but also consonant gradation, like Ume, Lule, and Norsami. A few more examples of words in Peter Sami are Botsui, meaning reindeer, Gulle, meaning fish, Wasta, cheese, Beive, which means both sun and day, and Varje which means mountain, Jokko means stream or a small river. The numbers one through five are akta, kvekte, kolpma, nelje, vikta. So those that are familiar with Sami languages will see that this is indeed between Lula and Ume Sami and it's hard to really place it in one subgroup only. The written sources to Peter Sami begin in the 1700s. Uh, in 1738 uh, comes the first translation of a whole book to what is considered to be Peter Sami. And uh, there's a map that was made in 1763 of the Norwegian Swedish border through the Peter Sami area. And uh, there are indeed Peter Sami names included there. In 1780 came the Lexicon Laponicum by Erik Lindahl, Johan Erling, and Johan Ira. It was published in an 
abstracted or stylized compromise between Seth, Ume, Pete, and Lulu Sami, and as such, isn't really a source primarily to Pete Sami, but it is a very valuable source, even so, for Pete Sami. In the 1800s, a number of non Sami researchers uh, had a look at Pete Sami and published a variety of output. The first one to publish was uh, Hales Ignaz or Ignaz Fischer, who did some field work in Saltern. He published 143 stories and songs in 1893 and a grammar and dictionary in 1896. In 1893 to 1938, Just Knut Kvigsta uh, published work based on his field work in Rana, Saltern, Weyern, and Fauska. He included Peter Sami words in his book, Nordisch Lenwörter in Lappischen, in 1893, and Peter Sami place names uh, in the Lappiske Stetsland in Finnmark and Nordland Fylker, 1938. He also wrote a manuscript with a comprehensive dictionary, and this manuscript probably dates from about 1928. In 1921 to 1941, Eliel Lagerkrantz from Finland did some field work in Bayern. Like well, his, the field work was in 1921. His Peter Sami grammar was published in 1926. And it included Peter Sami contents also in Lappische Wortschatz in 1939 and Synopsis des Lappischen in 1941. And then in 1992, Johanne Lechteranta published a Peter Sami grammar in which he declared that Peter Sami was extinct. Meanwhile, in the 1900s, community members entered the scene. And uh, Israel Zhuang was a Peter Sami himself. He did field work in Adiplog in 1937 through 1939, and he actually wrote his doctorate thesis on Peter Sami verbs in uh, 1943. And from the 1930s to the 1980s, Lars Rensen wrote multiple newspaper articles in Peter Sami as well as some books which included Peter Sami texts. And uh, this went all the time up to 1986 at least. Carl Johansson included some Peter Sami words and place names in his book Moito in 1989. But around 2006, um, people started looking into what the situation of Peter Sami was. And it was found that there were about 30 to 50 speakers, mostly in Ödipplug in Sweden. There were no known remaining first language speakers in Norway. And there were, were concerns now that the language could be heading for extinction. In 2007, Peter Steggo started Move Arpe, which was a Peter Sami blog in an adapted Lulisami uh, orthography. And around the same time started a community run uh, project with uh, collection of words in Peter Sami uh, to end up in a Peter Sami dictionary with time. Now, on the publishing side of things, Anshalo Chago published a contrastive Peter Lule grammar in 2015. In 2016, Joshua Wilbur had finished up his uh, doctoral work and he published a Peter Sami to Swedish English dictionary based on a community, on a com community run project just mentioned and his own doctoral research. And in 2017, uh, I started the Peter Sami to Swedish, Norwegian, Neonorskan Bokmar, English and German bidirectional dictionary app, Beat on Bago, based on Wilbur's dictionary and historical sources. 2019, the official orthography was signed. And from 2019, a number of children's books translated from by Peter Steggo and Inger Fjellås have been published and more translations are underway. 
So the app beat embargo. Uh, initially, it was based on Wilbur's dictionary with a systemic review of the entries in cooperation with Wilbur and Stego, based on sand files when available and phonological and morphological factors, including vowel length in the second vowel of the uh, stru structure. In practice, the second syllable in most words. Uh, older sources of Peter Sami and neighboring languages, those being primarily Lule, Umen, South Sami for the Uralic words, and Old Norse, Norwegian, and Swedish for their relevant loan words. Later on, the project was further expanded with materials from the older sources as well as input from the language community. The Bidenbago database has 5,072 main entries in Peter Sami now, with translations to Swedish, Norwegian Bokmar, Norwegian Nynorsk, English and German. This is June 2021. Now, how to do such a project? Funding, obviously, is a big problem when working with small languages, especially in an early phase where recognition may be so-so. So one has some needs. Ideally, free software. Open software is useful. And open file format is absolutely crucial. Because if the software is too expensive, it basically is a showstopper. And if the software is free, but then all of a sudden it enters a different situation where one has to pay for the software. If the file format is not open, then it may be very difficult to port it. So in practice, an XML compatible file format is very useful here. As for making your own software, that is time consuming and will actually take time away from working with the language. So I will highly recommend that. Now, what I did in practice in my project was that I went to SIL, or the Summer Institute of Linguistics, looked at uh, their website and their software, because they seem to have some readily made software available. So I started out very simply with the software we say. It's a program that's free, and it has XML-based outputs, the lift format. It's very easy to set up and use, even for non-linguists. It offers direct export to one-way OpenOffice dictionary files, and one can build a smartphone app for Android directly from the output files through the next piece of software that, that we're going to mention briefly in a moment. But the reversal dictionary export to a paper compatible format, that's absent. There's little support for output to a selection of languages, one outputs to all of them, or one doesn't. And it turns out that as the pro project grows, the risk of file corruption gets really high. And that is indeed what happened in my case, which forced me to move on from this uh, program. But fortunately, uh, we save files are very easy to export to Fieldworks Language Explorer or Flex, which we'll get back to in a moment. Now, Dictionary App Builder or DAB is the software I uh, mentioned uh, that can be used to export to a, um, a format for cell phones. It's also from SIL. It uses Lyft output from, for instance, we say. It makes quite a decent dictionary app for Android. Entries can have pictures, example sentences, sources, etc. There's no support for iPhone output, unfortunately, if DB is running Windows. And the installation of required external packages is very 
unreliable. And so that is that can be a major problem. Now, Fieldworks Language Explorer or Flex, which is the program I ported uh, to ported the data to from uh, we say. There's a screenshot here. As you can see, it has a lot of options. And uh, it will take us too far now to go into too much of this, but some keywords are. It's also from SAL. There's a much higher threshold for learning, setup, and use than WSA has, but it's also a much more powerful solution. It permits variant forms as redirects, which we say just didn't have. It can import and analyze a text corpus, which is immensely valuable, especially when you get it set up in a more advanced way. And it can export lift files to Dictionary App Builder. And it can also separate out and export conventional two-way dictionaries from a polyglot file for printed books. So for instance, out of this project, you could export a two-way dictionary between Pita and Swedish, and between Swedish and Pita, or similarly between Pita and English both ways. Now, there are some lexicographic challenges in setting up a dictionary in new languages, like the new language of Pita Sami. Because in terms of the written tradition, this indeed is a new language, even though it has been spoken for a very long time and written down for a long time also. So texts actually go back to the 1800s and even in part to the 1700s. But each source has its own taken phonology and transcription principles. And the dialects have some marked differences. So for instance, where people in the South say by yell, people in the North will say by yell, where the Southeast dialect has starra, the Western and older dialect has stadda, which is not much used today. And in North, it's stadda, where, by the way, there's also supposed to be an accent that unfortunately is not here. Now, the vowel system is not yet completely described. So, for instance, there's a whole class of words with the vowel u and this vowel is not yet represented in the official orthography. And this is a problem that's currently being worked on. The letter E used in the second syllable uh, of a regular word has two different realizations and would probably be better off split into two. But this is not necessarily so big a problem. So that may wait. Some graphemes represent two phonemes, like the letter A with ring stands for both O, sh the short sound, and O, the long sound. And then there's the question, should example phrases from historical sources be spelt as they are in the source or as they are according to the standard orthography. Now, to make a long story short, I made some choices in this project. And I found that interdialectal forms, which usually means the older forms, uh, are now the main forms in the dictionary. So instead of using the more widely spread forms that are used only in one end of the language area. And I use the older forms that can easily be pronounced one way or the other. And uh, the other forms have redirects. Now the drawback of this is that fewer speakers have a full phonetic correspondence between the chosen orthography and their pronunciation, but the benefit is also that almost all speakers now have a phonetic approximation that is only a single a simple step removed from their pronunciation. Now, 
The cited sources are followed by precise, precise quotes in the parentheses. Uh, this goes for the actual entries. Now, for the example phrases, though, they're adapted to the current orthography, but they do include archaic forms like the final he in the plural of a noun and things like that. So it's used when revitalizing a language. These issues are probably the same in very many cases. As uh, for Peter Sami, we can say the community is very fragmented for a variety of reasons. There's very few speakers remaining. There's little public visibility. There's a lack of children's books. There's a lack of school books. There's a lack of books for adults. And there's a lack of internet content. And there are very few language workers. So what should the priorities be? Dictionaries are absolutely crucial because these are a way to the language for those who simply do not have it anymore. And it's always a place where you can find words easily. Place names are important. Place names are a big part of identity. They're also an argument for establishing what area is actually the area of this population with this language. Signs are important. Road signs, information signs, and public buildings, and so on. The language needs to be seen from day to day. Children's books are very important for children and for adults learning language. One needs at least one language course, maybe more, but one has to have some point of departure for teaching in as effective a way as possible. And the teaching, because the community is so fragmented, one cannot just say, okay, we're going to have a class here. Now you just come. So one needs online classes, one needs seminars, it's very, very useful to have language paths where one goes and one speaks only the language, or at least one uses a, there's a very minimum of other languages to ask for a term. And these language paths are also very, very useful for children. Or maybe, yeah, it's, it's hard to express how much of a role these can play. But one can't do everything at once, so what must wait? Ideally nothing, of course. But since there just aren't enough language workers and practically no funding yet, general school books needs to wait. And unfortunately, Wikimedia contents also will have to wait for now because already with the other priorities, the people working with these projects are overworked and it is all spread too thinly already. So there is a need to focus on getting the basics done. But the sooner we manage to help more people to learn the language, the sooner we can move on to the next step of the Peter Sami revitalization, including hopefully a Peter Sami Wikipedia version. So that was all I had. Um, and thank you for listening.